Welcome to the Gospel Truth Show produced by Cross and Crown Radio. We want to make a lasting difference in your life and in our community. Our mission is to produce biblical, entertaining, and Christ-centered programs for God's people and folks all around the world. Post a comment or a question and sit back and enjoy the show. GospelTruthShow.Podbeam.com Hello, this is Cross and Crown Radio and the Gospel Truth Podcast. And I'm Mike Robinson, your host. We've got a fascinating topic today. Why is Christianity the only true religion? Sounds very exclusive. A lot of progressives don't like that kind of talk, but can there be one truth? And if there is, why is it Christianity over, say, Islam or Hinduism or Jehovah's Witnessism or Mormonism, Buddhism, etc.? We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that deeply, and so... Uh, stick with us. But before we start, if you could, give us a subscription. It's at the top of your YouTube channel there. If you're watching this via YouTube. It really helps us. Give us a subscription. And then if you click that button next to it, also uh, it helps you get the updates that we're doing. So why is Christianity true? I'll tell you. I, I give this little story that really helps. When I first got saved, I thought about all the evidence that Christianity had, that Jesus had, but no other religion had. Because, as I've mentioned in a, a past uh, podcasts and past shows, I was saved as a non-believer. I didn't have any religion at all. And so I wanted to make sure that Christianity was true or, or nothing. So I investigated all the world religions, investigated atheism and agnosticism. My life was really, really good. I had everything I wanted, good family, good income, lots of gals. Everything that I wanted to do, I was doing. No reason to change my life and disrupt it with a new religion. So I investigated every religion. If I'm going to commit myself to anything, it better be true. There better be evidence for it or I'm going to stay as a non-believer. So I investigated them all and I found Christianity to be true. Then once I found it to be true, I would educate young people because most people think, well, Christianity is just an option. It's like going to an ice cream shop and someone likes chocolate, someone likes strawberry, someone likes vanilla. Just pick whatever you want, whatever works best. Or all religions are basically the same, or all religions are something that you believe that you know is not true. So just do whatever you want. That's, uh, that's what I believe, and a lot of people come in, even as Christians, kind of believing that. They think, well, Jesus really, really works for me, so that's why I'm a Christian. And that's good that Jesus works for you, but the main thing is Jesus is the truth. If he is the truth, then there's going to be evidence and proof for it. And if the Bible is the truth, there's going to be evidence and proof for it. For it. And of course, both those things are true. So the little illustration I use is I take a, a Coke bottle or something, and I'll say, you know what? For those who don't believe that Christianity is the one truth because Jesus has all this evidence, I say, you know what? A guy came to me the other day, and he said this Coke bottle spoke to him. The Coke bottle said, it's a real thing, and it's God. And it told him to write a book. And he wrote a book. He writes this whole book that tells you how to get close to God. And he gives me the book. And he says, Mike, you got to believe this book so that you'll be saved. And I go, how do I know? He goes, because this Coke bottle spoke to me. And I said, well, I didn't hear it speak to you. But, but it did. It really did. I go, do you have any proof for it? He goes, well, I got the book. I go, well, all religions have the book. Do you have any proof for evidence why your religion is true over the other ones? And he said, well, God really, really spoke to me here through this Coke bottle. Uh, and I said, well, how do I know? Well, because I got the book. And you can see it comes down to he has no evidence. Same thing with Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith says, well, he went to the, into the forest and God spoke to him. How do we know? Well, he's got the book and he says so. That's not good enough for me. I need evidence and proof. Muhammad, I went to a cave and God, through the angel Gabriel, spoke to me. How do I know that? Well, here I got the book and because it's true. Believe me, it's true. Look at it. You have to look at it and it's true. That's that's not good enough for me. I need evidence. So as I was discovering, all these religions have no evidence. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I found Christianity had a ton. It had a massive amount of evidence, including over 300 predictions about Jesus written before he was born. And it predicted how he would live, how he would die, the things he would do in his lifetime, the towns he would be born in, the town he would be raised in. All these things, over 300 different specific facts were predicted before he came. The Dead Sea Scrolls that were found in the 20th century have been carbon dated before the time of Jesus 
And there are copies of the Old Testament within these Dead Sea Scrolls. And within those copies of the Old Testament are the same predictions about Jesus. So now we know that they were written before Jesus came. The New Testament records it, so do other non-biblical sources record many of these same facts. Over 300 predictions about Jesus, they all came true. Secondly, which we're going to get into, ontologically as far as whose God's being is, the being of God, the nature of God, only the God of the Bible has the nature and the ontological heft, if you will, to account for universal immutables, which we have to utilize in everything we analyze, and everything we study, and everything we think, and everything we say, and everything we do. We'll get into that in a little bit. I'll explain that. So the bottom line is, all other religions are basically like this Coke bottle. Yeah, it's the real thing, all right. But the guy comes to me and says, a Coke bottle spoke to him. He shows me a book. And I said, well, how do I know it's true? He says, because it is. That's all the other religions have. Is they got a book, probably. They got a guy who said God spoke to him. But we weren't there. We don't know it. So prove it. The God of the Old Testament said, you know what? In Isaiah 44 and Isaiah 48, as well as other places, he says, I'm going to make predictions. Because I can see everything because I'm God. And when these predictions come true, you're going to know, thus says the Lord, that God has spoken. And God in the Bible did that over 300 times in Jesus' life and dozens and dozens of other times and other circumstances throughout history. So we have to understand that Jesus is the truth and that there is no other religious a religion that's truth. Some people say, well, the flying spaghetti monster or Apollo or Thor or Allah uh, can be God just like your God can. And we say, no, remember the, the, the Coke uh, bottle. It's a real thing. The Coke spoke to me. Shiva spoke to me. They say, Apollo spoke. Thor spoke. Well, how do we know? Well, just because I got this book or just believe me because I'm really sincere or it's changed my life. Again, that's not good enough. Do they have any proof? Do they have any evidence? And the answer is no. See, all these gods ultimately do not have the ontological capacity to account for universal mutables. There's many universal immutables that we have to utilize in how we think about things, how we look at things, and how we do things, okay? Including the law of non-contradiction, the law of identity, geometrical absolutes, mathematical truths, moral absolutes, a personal identity, and on and on. These things that are immutable universals apply to all the things that we think about and say, and only the God of the Bible has universal reach and power and is immutable. And these other gods and their books attest to that. They, they won't tell you that these gods have universal reach and are immutable. Allah does in some sense, but then ultimately Allah has no attributes and Allah is unknowable. So if he's unknowable then we, and we can't know anything about Allah ultimately, then we cannot know that he has universal reach and power. We cannot know that he's immutable. And so since we can't know anything about Allah, he's so transcendent we can't, He's off the table. He's the only one that would even come close because uh, the Muslims obviously copied and parroted a lot of the, the Christian and Jewish uh, sources. So Christianity must be true because of the proof. Elves, Easter Bunny, Apollo, they do not have the ontology. Neither does Shiva or Krishna. They do not have the ontology, the nature, that's powerful enough to provide the universal necessities required for knowledge, truth, and reason. Only God of the Bible does. The flying spaghetti monster, Thor, Santa, if you will, they do not have the ontological power or resource within themselves to account for these universal immutables. So if you want to say, well, you know, the flying spaghetti monster, Apollo, or my pet turtle could be God just as much as your God can be, an atheist will say things like that. No. They do not have universal reach of power, and they're not immutable, so they cannot account for the universal immutable laws of logic as well as the other uh, universal immutables. And so that proof permeates everything that we think about and everything we do. Why? Because we have to utilize those universal immutables in everything. In everything. You can't escape it. So this proof is powerful because the pores leak out into everything. Everything we could possibly analyze, anything that we can possibly do with science, anything that we could possibly speak about, anything we could possibly do, whether it's a game, 
whether it's uh, talking to a relative, whether it's being on the phone, whether it's being at work, whether it's analyzing logical truths, all of that requires the God of the Bible. And so God must exist. We know this is a fact. This is not just merely a fact, but it is a truth that can account for all real facts. That's powerful. So the God of the Bible is immutable. He doesn't change. The God of the Bible is omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. So he has universal reach and power. So in principle, only the God of the Bible can account for all these things. No other God or so-called God has that modality. None of them say that he's got that, they got that nature. They admit that. Uh, Thor does not have that nature, obviously. Christians does not have that uh, immutable nature with universal reach and power. Neither does Shiva. None of these so-called gods do. And they readily admit it. So it's not like we're arguing with them. And so when you think about what is the foundation, what is the source, what is the fount to be able to have intelligibility, to have reason, to have knowledge, and to have truth. You need universal immutables to have any of those things. And only the God of the Bible can account for these things. So it's powerful. It's really powerful. Shiva, Allah, the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, Thor, the Flying Spaghetti Monster, Krishna, etc. Cannot do it. Only the God of the Bible has the ontological capacity and the power to account for immutable universals necessary for knowledge and truth as well as all reality. All reality. Notice it. He's inescapable. The claimants of other religions declare their attributes of their name God. They, they declare and admit and reveal that that God, he or she, lacks those capabilities. So they're off the table right off the bat. And so when you look at a Coke, and some guy comes up to you and says, this Coke bottle spoke to me, or Joseph Smith spoke to me, or Muhammad, or excuse me, that Joseph Smith says, God spoke to me, or Muhammad says, God through the angel Gabriel spoke to me, or any other claimant says, a God spoke to him, it's similar to the guy who says, this Coke bottle spoke to him and said, write this book and write it down and give it to the world, and then the world will have salvation. How do we know? that God spoke to you through this Coca-Cola bottle? Well, just believe me, it is. I got this book. Not good enough. All the other religions of the world, not good enough. You need proof and you need evidence, and only the Christian faith has that. Only Jesus had over 300 predictions about his life. Only Jesus has been risen from the dead. You can visit Muhammad's tomb, Buddha's tomb, David Koresh, Jim Jones, on and on and on. You can't visit Jesus' Jesus's tomb and see his bones in there, but all the others, their tombs still have their bones, but not Jesus because he's risen. And here it is. You're walking down the street, and there's two roads that diverge into a fork, and you got to think, okay, which way should I go for life? One has life, one doesn't. One has water that you need, one doesn't. And there's a, a guy who's alive on one side and a dead guy on the other. Who are you going to ask for directions to find life, to find that water? Of course, the guy who's alive, and that's Jesus. And the evidence for the resurrection is compelling, it's persuasive, it's powerful. That's for another video. You can get my book, Risen. It's called Risen. It gives the presuppositional proof for the resurrection within uh, utilizing evidential apologetics, but within the context of a presuppositional apologetics. It's called Risen by Mike Robinson. You can get that on Amazon. You could also get a book that I wrote, God Does Exist, that talks about how unique Christianity is and how the God of the Bible is the only true and living God. That he alone has the proof and the evidence that he declares. And so, as we get close, we're almost winding down here. We're calling all young men who feel that they have a call to be a pastor or an evangelist or an apologist out to Granbury, Texas. Beautiful town. Texas is marvelous. If you have that call and you want to be trained, you want to be encouraged, you want to be fortified, you want to be lifted up, you want to be, uh, you want to work with me and our staff, we will help you become an apologist or an evangelist or a pastor. We will help you plant a church if God's put that on your heart. You can email me at mrob lv at gmail.com or leave a comment in the comment section that's m and rob rob lv as in las vegas m rob lv at gmail.com any young men that want to come out 
And if you're out there and you want to support us, we're planting churches. And we're trying to plant churches all over the place. Now these churches are interesting and unique. Why? They shouldn't be, but they are. We have a tremendous focus on Jesus. Very, very Jesus-centered for the glory of the Father by the power of the Spirit. So that's what we do. Number two, they're filled with love. Deep, real love. And then there is a thrust of apologetics within the teaching of that church, as well as powerful doctrine as a foundation. That's a church as we plan. If you want to help us, we really need your help. You can go to your smartphone, and you get your smartphone, and you just... Go where you put the phone number and put 84321, 84321. And then where you write the text, put the amount, say $50 or $500, whatever it is. Put that in there. And then follow the directions. Go to Life Church uh, as you send it and give as God would put on your heart. We really appreciate that. Why do I know Christianity is true? Because God's grace opened my heart and the Holy Spirit through the Word changed me. How do I know that uh, Christianity is true? Why do I believe? Because the Bible has all this proof, especially the massive archaeological proof. The Book of Mormon doesn't have it. The Bible does. Why? I mentioned earlier the over 300 predictions or prophecies about Jesus. They all came true. I also mentioned the proof of the resurrection of Christ. Also, no other religious leader died on the cross for your sins. Only Jesus did so the cross. Why do I believe in Christianity? The Bible, the 300 plus predictions, the cross, and justification. No other faith, no other religion can give you justification. Justification is this. You trust in Jesus. All your sins, all of them, washed away. And then the righteousness of Jesus, that perfect record Jesus lived, is imputed to your account. Justification. Also, we can see the proof of the universe. There has to be a designer because we see design. You don't see design anywhere else unless there's a designer. Also, the DNA language. If you hear language, if you see language, you know that there's intelligence behind it. Logic is one of those uh, universal mutables, like the law of identity and the law of non-contradiction. Those laws of logic, only the God of the Bible can account for. And of course, most of all, Jesus. Nobody's like Jesus. Nobody's like him. Nobody spoke like him. No one loved like him. No one died on the cross for our sins like him. Nobody rose again on the third day like he did. All these things come into one guy, Jesus. And remember, God is not in the dock. We do not judge God. We know that God exists. All but in do. It's impossible for the God of the Bible not to exist. He alone supplies that pre-environment I talked about earlier for intelligibility, reason, and knowledge. And since these things exist, God must exist. And now if you're out there and you're thinking, man, I'm, I'm a Muslim and I, I know this, is, this Christianity is true. I'm an atheist, agnostic, or a Hindu, or a Buddhist. I really want salvation. I really want to be forgiven. I really want a place in heaven. I want to be accepted by God. I want to live a life of joy and power and peace. Well, here's the deal. Luke 18, a tax collector, it says, was standing far off. He wouldn't even raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And this is what Jesus says. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. He was justified. What I talked about earlier, he was declared righteous. Sins removed, the record of Jesus imputed or accounted to him. And Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so here you go. If God has touched your heart through the word and spirit, and by grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone, you, you know that you believe in Jesus. You, you profess this after me to your Heavenly Father. You say, I believe. I believe in Jesus. I believe He's a Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for all my sins and that He was raised from the dead by God Himself. I believe this. I make Him Lord of my life and my heart all these days. I will live for Him. Fill me with your Spirit. If you said that, if God truly worked on your heart through His grace, by His Word and Spirit, you are now accepted by God. You now have a place in heaven because of Jesus alone. So now go to a good church. Get involved in a good church. Read your Bible every day. And send us a comment or send us an email, mroblv at gmail.com. If you got saved, if you left Islam or, or atheism or Hinduism, we love getting letters, especially from those groups. Um, and so we're so grateful for you. And this is Pastor Mike Robinson telling you, don't trust in a Coke bottle. Don't trust in Joseph Smith. Don't trust in Muhammad. Don't trust in Buddha. It's just like the Coke bottle. 
He spoke to me. He really, really did. How do I know? They don't. There's no proof. Jesus had all the proof. The amazing proof. The astounding proof. The powerful proof. Live for Him. And so this is Mike Robinson. Until next time, may God bless you. Hey guys, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us a lot. Additionally, don't forget to join our Full Access Media Experience. We want you to know that Cross and Crown Full Access is now available for just $7.99 a month. Full Access provides an enjoyable Christian media experience. Every day we produce biblical, entertaining, and Christ-centered programs for you on demand. Sign up for Cross and Crown Full Access and get every television show, the after show, a free book monthly, and all our academic work at your command. All just one click away at gospeltruthshow.podbean.com. Help us reach the world.